Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with Spending Time, the Blog to Watch podcast. I am joined once again by the illustrious David Breton. Hello. Hey everyone. We are intending for this show to be about the community. We want to respond to certain sentiments that we see on a regular basis by some of the commenters on the site, on YouTube. We're not gonna we're not gonna respond to specific people or specific statements, but just sort of generally things that we see. We do read the comments, not all of them. Um there's a lot of comments. I guess to a large degree I'm happy that we have more comments that that, that I personally or that any one person can look through. It would it, it would be doable, but it would be uh it would be a long process. Um and I think comments are interesting because in addition to people being able to communicate with one another you know, in the more recent years, people feel that they can communicate with the person that wrote the thing they're commenting about. Do you remember when that happened? Because I remember it used to be like you were commenting to other commenters as opposed to the person that wrote it. Or was it always about the person that wrote it? Uh, I, I think it really depends. It, it, it varies greatly. Okay, it varies. Um, so, you know, the the community is... It's part of the sort of lifeblood of any website, right? The community shows that there's that there are people there. It, you know, it, it shows that there's you know someone in the restaurant with you, so to say, which is good. Um, it shows that you know. It, it, I think at best, the community functions as peer review, right? If you make a mistake, uh, a peer can say, uh, hold on a second, I, I think there's there's a little bit more discussion that needs uh, to happen here, or you made a mistake. And in that way, it functions very much like in the academic world where the person writing it is getting the benefit of their community, their peers, uh, so to say, to check their work and, and refine it and make it better. Um, and in the internet, I mean, boy, we could, we could talk for hours and hours as to what commenting areas on various different parts of the internet have uh, <laughs> elevated to or degraded to. Um, but I think what's more important is that the comments, at least for us, the people that... that produce the content for blog to watch give us an opportunity to see how people react to things and I want to first say that my instinct and I want to know what you feel David is and I don't mean this in a cold-hearted way but at least once in a while to just utterly ignore the audience because I'm because I we got to where we were by producing content that we like not content uh, to spec by what people say they want like I don't know that we would be ever be successful producing uh, spec content if you know what I mean what do you think yeah I, I think that makes perfect sense but what I would add to that is that the problem is that when you know like there are critical voices here and there or something like that they often seem to be very loud you know let's say like five or ten or maybe even even if a hundred people were loud about it you know but you had like just to give you an example 10,000 views on an article or a video or something like that that still would put that hundred people, but we're not talking about a hundred usually, but more like ten or five or whatever, in the absolute minority of things. And once you start listening to them, you start making content for a handful of people, and you start ignoring the the, the quiet majority, you know, who who have been tuning in and who have been consuming the content, and you know, they have been sort of returning customers. Like so if you know, yeah, like, go ahead. Okay, I remember like in and, and and again, I don't necessarily know this is a perfect analog, but in sort of the schoolyard or the classroom growing up as a child. And there'd always be some kids that would say things and everyone else would like look at each other and be like, did that person really say that? Hmm. But in the internet, it's kind of like just those people that like have no problem making awkward statements in public places. They're the, they're the ones that you see because everyone else is invisible. So I think that we have this interesting culture where like, the people who are willing to say things, whether or not it's calculated or not, are getting the most attention. And, you know, it, it's it's bravery and ego which allows you to say things online, especially when you can hide under the veil of anonymity. Which is funny because you and I don't do that, and that's something that we don't really say to the community a lot. It's like, a lot of you, not everyone, because there are people out there that have their real names, but a lot of people, they... I don't want to use the word hide. That sounds makes it sound so like intentional. But they get the, they have the privilege, right? Perhaps they can they can opt out of it of being anonymous. But it's like it, it's our names up there, and it's always it's always been very strange to me to feel like I'm I'm in some type of debate or sometimes even like a verbal combat with somebody wearing a mask. It's always been weird to me. What about you? 
Yeah, that that totally applies. You said, you know, it takes bravery and ego, but you know, not having a name and not having a face replaces bravery. Sure. So so, so that's the that's the substitute for it. I'm not saying they are they, they're not brave because it takes a certain courage, you know, at least to dedicate your time and say, Okay, I'm putting my time into sharing what I'm thinking. And I think we always appreciate that. That's why we are talking about this right now, not because not for any other reason. But when I look around and, and, and look at, you know, all those media outlets who've been producing, you know, the sort of work that I personally like to consume as a reader or as a viewer, uh, I always see that they have really not given in to the loud critical voices. They take it to heart. Sometimes they address it. But when I look back at several seasons or I look at, you know, like years of work, uh, if it's, if it's uh, in text, what I see is that, you know, of course they take it to heart and, they, and you know, if they see that it really applies and it's, uh, it's a substantial uh, feedback, then they will, um, they will adjust accordingly. But just because it's loud or just because it's rude or something like that, even if it's, uh, even if it's consistently loud and consistently rude about it, it will not have an effect. So, you know, so, and not having a name and not having a face... In my mind, that detracts a lot from the value and the weight of any sort of criticism. But that's maybe that's just me. I mean, I think one of the things that you and I do as a mistake, and we've actually had people in the community say this to us, and, and there's times where I agree with them. Is they're like, you know, they say, I, I'm trying to like sort of summarize it, you know, like, hey, Ariel, or hey, David, um, you're you're taking our statements too seriously. We don't actually want you to. We want to be able to goof off and and talk crap down here and not really have you pay attention or really like, you know, notice that we're doing it and that you are. We're kind of like, "Uh-oh, you know, you kind of saw our like locker room conversation, only that conversation isn't really happening in the in a locker room with a small limited number of trusted individuals. It's happening in a lot more public of a way." which means we have a little bit more of a right to be miffed um, if there's an uh, what we see as a inappropriate uh, or, or like off-topic conversation that, that changes the attitude of the content um, and it detracts from a lot of other people who are just trying to get uh, a qualified opinion on a product which is very expensive and might be appealing but they want to be able to make a, a qualified decision and so these is competing interests of different types of people come to the site and it can be challenging for any one of them to understand what someone else is looking for you know what I mean yeah I totally I totally agree and the problem is you know like yeah if, if it's just us talking down here you know if it if were just you then that would mean you know I couldn't see it if I can see it everyone else can see it and if everyone else can see it it provokes a response from us because if you don't, you know, if you don't address, you know, that sort of people think if you don't reply or you don't attend to these things, then that means you're quietly acknowledging it. You know, you are quietly agreeing or you're saying, oh, maybe if I don't say anything, you know, like politicians do a lot of the times when they are in deep shit, what they will do is they will just ignore as long as they can possibly can uh, without addressing the problem because they know it will go away. But sort of that's the association with us as well if we don't respond and responding to locker room chat that I was not supposed to be involved in and for the record I didn't even want to be involved in <laughs> you know <laughs> it, it's still something that I have to I have to see to which is super annoying because this is not what I want to spend my time on so if you want to leave me out of it then leave me and everyone else out of it so just create a little club somewhere online you know create a Facebook group or do whatever you want just leave us and everyone else out of it. That's my only request. Look, there's a there's a cathartic element for a lot of people to look online at things they can't afford or at least can't afford very often um, that are for a, a group of people that maybe they're not, they would like to be, but they're not as, as much as they are. You know, r rich people are very easy targets, and I don't even represent that category. I happen to be someone that has a lifestyle that allows me to uh, play around with a lot of luxuries that I personally can't afford. Um, but, you know, in the car world, right, it's like if someone's driving around a car that you really like, uh, it's very often the fact that someone comes away with just thinking like, a-hole. Like, you don't even know the person, but, like, they're driving around a car in a kind of ballsy way that maybe you would like to be doing. All of a sudden, they're a bad person. You in that car, awesome. Them, no. And yeah. I think it's, it's you know, watches, by virtue of who wears them, are a very easy target. And so a lot of people feel that despite the sort of thing that we love about this art form, 
yeah, you know, th this is, th you know, you're looking at the screen right now, this $1.2 million watch. Um, you and I don't look at this as like, hmm, I wonder if that's a really good price for $1.2 million. If we had $1.2 million, there's like a list a mile long of things that we would probably have to spend it on before this, um, just by <laughs> just by virtue of necessity, right? Like, you have to have made so many $1.2 million that this is just like, okay, this weekend I'll buy this. <laughs> I um, mean, there's a very small group of people that, that are like that. And those people probably didn't get or hold or hold on that money in a way that um, everybody's grandmother would nod their head was, you know, the, the, the virtuous thing to do. So, yeah, there is there's sort of a, a prejudice inherent in these products based upon who is likely wearing them. Not necessarily who is, but who is likely to be probably wearing them at some point or buying them, which has nothing to do with the product itself. Um, but if it wasn't for that buyer, these things wouldn't be made in the first place, right? So I, I feel like we kind of wiggle in between when it was made and, and, and when it goes into some type of, you know, underground vault. Um, we can appreciate it for what it is. And maybe when it resurfaces, we'll, we'll comment about it again. Like, oh, remember when that thing was made? Yeah, um, exactly. So this conversation about kind of disparaging these products um, because of who is going to be wearing them is something that I understand. But I don't know why people can't have to do it in a way that n they know d doesn't flatter them, right? Like, if you're going to go ahead and criticize someone, why do you open yourself to being so easily criticized in the process? <laughs> well, we're we are opening up, you know, depths, sort of depths, you know, that I don't think many would even care to think about, so... Um, yeah, that's a valid question, but you know, that's it's also a rhetorical question a little bit, I think. Because you know, people a lot of people clearly don't really care about that. They they all they think is just F you for this, F you for that. And you know, I'm not you know, the problem is that we talked about this before, is that these products and these watches and even in a way what we do when we have access to these watches is exclusionary. And although we go there and we take the pictures and we put a lot of time into writing the text and we edit the photos and we do all this stuff to bring these watches to people, they still weren't there. And for some, they will say, oh, okay, thanks guys for going to Baselworld and I appreciate the coverage. We see that a lot of the times. But sometimes people will think, oh, you saw this and this is what you think about it? Then screw you because I think something else about it, but it, I didn't even get to see it. Well, you know, I, people people follow these cults of opinions. You know, we, we live in a increasingly segmented society where by virtue of the internet you can basically follow those opinions and lifestyles and outlooks that that you feel match your own and that's that's doable in fact the internet facilitates it with these algorithmic feeds that, to tell you here's what you should be reading today and that you know there's all these studies that show uh, you know uh, it, re it reinforces the uh, the things you already think right so you yeah. get further and further um isolated from other opinions mm -hmm. so in the context of watches i find this this interesting habit i don't even think people know it's happening where they see a product and they're like that wasn't made for me i'm angry i don't like that that's not in my pr that, that's that's not priced for my budget screw you so <laughs> when a piece of content isn't i don't want to say designed for them but isn't relevant to them or maybe is relevant, like, this is my price point, but damn, that I think that's ugly. How dare you, website? <laughs> and it's like, you know, I, 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 look, I look at the example of, like, having a significant other, right? Like, you can't go to someone and say, like, you know, ma'am, I think your husband's very ugly. Like, you don't, you can't tell someone their taste is bad. You cannot argue with someone's taste. And I feel that that applies to watches a lot. If someone you know, wear something proudly and they like it and when they stare at it, they they are happy. You can't tell them you're not entitled to like this. You can say this breaks all these rules of like symmetry and ergonomics and balance and legibility and blah blah blah. You can come up with all these arguments to demonstrate to them why it's a bad design. And you might show them why it wouldn't be classically beautiful. Or it goes against a lot of like things we found in nature about what is and isn't beautiful. And boy, I can't imagine why you think this beautiful. But you can't, you can't tell them that they don't feel it, right? Because ultimately you don't know. Yeah. You, so you can, you can argue a bunch of stuff. But to be angry that something ugly has been presented in front of you, how am I supposed to predict that, sir? I don't know what you find ugly. You know why, why did you? I didn't. What, what I don't understand is why do people even read about stuff that they know is going to make them angry? 
This is way beyond my comprehension. Way beyond. Whoa, whoa. You want to open up that little can of worms, huh? Mm, no, I, I genuinely don't. I genuinely okay, <laughs> the studies have shown that the angrier content is online, the more the more likely it's going to be shared and the more likely it's going to be viewed. So the more pissed off people are on social media or whatever it is, the more views they get. So naturally what happens is it attracts people that are increasingly exaggerated in their opinion or can convince themselves because there's not that many people out there that legitimately pissed off, that it feels so unjust. These are just people that can like either convince themselves that these are a bigger deal than they are or are really good actors and performers. But statistically, that's what gets a lot of reactions from people online. Are you? And, and at the same time I'm talking about, this you're talking about the Richard Mill RM7001. This actually looked good on the wrist. Yeah, I I didn't, you know, it's it's it's, it's what it Did is. You, are you are you one of the people in the? I don't think this is a psychically pleasing camp. Mm, no, nah, well, you know, I like Richard Mill, you know, so I, they haven't really done too much that I didn't like. So I would wear this. You know, you know what I, you know what I love about this one. Mm. This is like the this is like a Dolly version. Okay. Yes, exactly. Like if if I was taking some hallucinogens and I wanted to see like a melty version of a Richard Mille, I don't even have to imagine they made one for me. Yeah, exactly. It's right you there. Know, this is, you know what you know what this is this is this is their version. No, that's mean. I was gonna say of the Cartier crash, but the Cartier crash was a melted watch from a car accident. This was designed to be ergonomic, but it does feel like. Um, a funhouse mirror and a Richard Mille, like you know, got it on. It's cool. At least they stepped out of their comfort zone a little. Bit. I just finished writing a um, an Omega hands-on with the new Apollo Eight Dark Side of the Moon with the handbound movement, etc. That has the moon's surface on the dial and also. Oh, even the, is on the this case the skeletonized side. one? Yeah, and and so I was thinking, you know, like. This is so great that they finally stepped out of their comfort zone a little bit there, you know, and they started doing something that it's not your average, you know, like, okay, here's another Apollo, whatever. But actually, it was something that that was really genuinely creative. So I want to see big brands do creative stuff a whole lot more these days, because I think that's that's what really makes a difference for me. So look for yeah. that hands on soon. Was that? Uh, no, I was just saying, so, you know, it, it, is this the type of thing that you're worried about what people are going to say about the comments? This watch looks a lot cooler in person than pictures, I'll tell you that. Oh, people will freaking love this. I, I think this is going to do really well. It's a great piece of design from Omega. I love it. I love it a lot. But it's a pure design watch. This is like the least tool watch, tool watch they've ever made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the most wearable, and it's still legible. What I like about it is that this is this sort of Roman germ kind of moon theme DNA thing going on about it. But it's done in an Omega way. That's great. I like it a lot. That, that's what that's what Romain Jerome need to be doing a lot more of, is mm -hmm. stuff like this. But they just forgot, like, oh, hey, it also has to be tool watch. But Romain Jerome is changing, so we'll we'll focus on their future. Okay, so a common thing that, that audience members say, which I think that... I don't know if we keep, need to keep responding to it, but I still respond to it as often as I can, is this notion that we're secretly being paid to, like, shove an agenda in their face. Mm -hmm. Like... There's a watch they don't like, we're being paid. There's a topic they see too much of, we're being paid. Um, we're not being critical enough, we're being paid. We're being too critical, we're being paid. In fact, I, 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 I would love to know what it is that they see as evidence to suggest that, or is it just that they, you know, they, they know that like 8 out of 10 instances when there's something related to a product online, maybe it's being paid and the other two are, are you know, questionable. I, I don't know. I don't read probably as much as I should have like product reviews all over the place now. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know what it is, but it's always weirded me out how time and time again, with no provocation, people are like, this is paid, this is advertorial. I'm like, like if you don't like it, that's one thing. But like, why do you jump to that conclusion out of all things? I, can, I will never, you know, yeah. And even if it was true, which it isn't, you know, like sometimes, because sometimes these 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 theories are, let alone they are not true, but they are so freaking far detached from reality and from anything even remotely important, even in their mind. Like, if, if I read it and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, let's, let's just picture for a second that this was in fact true. What would be their next step? 
and what difference would it make in journalism or in watch journalism or whatever and how long a list do we have in front of us when we look around us about when it comes to issues in watch journalism and where would this weird obscure theory rank in, uh, among all of those you know it's not at all it's so far away from anything important or anything that would make a difference if it were true which it isn't it's just so far from anything important in my mind at least or based on my values that it's just i don't understand how people can dedicate time to this david's mind is baffled everyone that's what he's trying to say that's how i spend my days <laughs> bafflement bafflement um you know I, I think one of the interesting things that's been happening lately is you know our team has had to make some decisions about how we want to handle elements of the community that have detracted more than they've added that's probably the best way i'll say detracted more than they've added. And we've had a lot of conversations about what I would call disciplinary measures, which is a weird thing because I think that it's important for us to say to everyone, again, um, the last thing we want to do is play police officers or babysit or do any type of thing with the community that, that is that is not encouraging them or responding to like interesting questions and comments and stuff like that. Like we don't like we don't sit there and be like, oh man, whose whose comment can we delete today? We we hate that. It's like mm -hmm. the worst thing in the world. Um and for years I thought that the community would be protective of enough of itself, meaning they they had a sense of camaraderie, they could answer each other's questions. You know, there's less and less of these independent watch forms um out there and my understanding is that these forums, the more they became commercialized in the sense that they had corporate owners as opposed to individual owners, um, the less they became places where conversations could get started. Um, they just they aren't what they used to be. I don't know if there's stricter rules now. I actually don't know a lot of the details about um, how some of these you know watch forums, traditional watch forums, are, are, are being governed today. But I do know that a lot of the people that used to be on those forums are no longer and are coming to a blog to watch, to participate in the community, and they're trying to take some of the same conversation tactics they did from a forum, which is like a little private club, to a much more publicly facing uh, website that the brands um, equally to people all over the world look at in addition to watch lovers that just maybe aren't buying watches every day, but are definitely enjoying to talk about it and, and learn about them every single day. So there's this collection of people, and we have to satisfy a lot of different community needs. It's not always an easy thing to have to juggle it all the time. And, and we have, you know, we have to sort of uh, respect different bases, and we have to um, consider the needs and, and concerns of various stakeholders and things like that. At the end of the day, we want to just have good, useful, civilized conversations. And if someone is taking too much advantage of the fact that we provide a forum for conversations, aren't we obligated to protect that community and protect that forum? And and I think the answer is yes, we are. Absolutely. Um, so we don't like to be we don't like to have to enforce disciplinary measures. And when we do, we want to do so in as fair a way as possible. Uh, there are individuals who we feel have taken advantage of an opportunity that we, we help create, which is, a, 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 you know, a community Big and time. a platform. Yeah. And it, it's interesting, you know, uh, some of these, uh, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call them, you know, more um, class clown style uh, commenters. They have they have oftentimes actually interesting things to say about watches, but they have to paint it in this weird attitude or communication strategy, which is so destructive. I've never quite understood that. It's like just saying what you as an individual think isn't enough. You have to like um, you have to perform it out there. Yeah, the problem is that um, I feel people feel the need to do this because you know they they think and they are wrong about it that they will not get the the, uh, the attention that they desire or they think they, they should get uh, if they don't make a whole you know fuss about it. So as opposed to just throwing it out there, they understand from experience because you know partially they are actually right that they get more attention. They're not getting the right sort of attention, but they are getting attention. And they cannot really, they often cannot make that sort of uh, distinction between, oh, okay, the way people are listening to me and the way they are interacting with me is it the right sort of interaction I was looking for? No. But it's some sort of interaction, so I will just take it. I like these LUC watches a lot. Are these ones that are also not universally loved? I, I, you know, I mean, I look at these, and I know that for the money, 
they're a lot better than some of the competition. Yep. Yet Shobar doesn't seem to put enough of an institutional backing behind it. Yep. You know, like I really want there to be more of a, a maison, as Richmond would call it. Oh. Shobar is not part of Richmond. Thank God. All right, what else are some common sentiments and things we see from the community? Um, and it's interesting how things have changed. I think there used to be this period of time where everyone's like, oh, the, the, glamorous, uh, the glamorous life of a watch blogger. There's still a little bit of that, but I, I, I see less of it on our platform. There's plenty, there's plenty um, talking down on the watch blogger, I think, on, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. But I think part of that is because the term blogger uh, has expanded in ways that are way beyond what at least a blogger traditionally was. I mean, a blogger is someone that writes <coughs> um, updates on a blog-style website. I think you have to do things like write and have a topic and do it on a regular basis and probably be a photographer. But writing seems to be a really big part of it. And when you have people that are bloggers that are not writing... Not writing <laughs> um, I don't know. And then they abandoned it, and then they called everyone influencers, which is like, why do we have to use broader and broader terms to th- to describe things that are actually quite narrow in scope? Because they're doing less and less. They are not narrower. They are just, just simply less. You know what it is? Mm. It's because there's less and less of an educational requirement, and people used to be defined by the educational needs they had or the educational background they had. Now it's like these people are coming from everywhere, and m- most of them don't seem to have formal educations as it is. They don't seem to even have jobs. We're not even they don't not even all paid the same way. So they try to find terms that that crudely in this case in my opinion try to sort of include all of them. And I think the problem is your parent is an influencer. A magazine is an influencer. A government's an influencer. Everything in your neighborhood is an influencer. Yeah. So it's a silly term. Um but there, but I think I think it's actually changed now a lot. But that's one of the things that I think that we've very successfully been able to communicate to the community is to change this perception of what our jobs even are, and where the hard parts are, where the joys are. But I feel that you know there used to be a period of time where our job was very misunderstood, and and I understand it. There's not that many of us. You have to really sort of like look closely at what we do to get it. Um, and I think there's a lot more support and camaraderie there's a suspicion over media in general but like i think people understand um and and can empathize with our jobs a lot more than maybe two or three years ago would you agree i guess i would i don't really care for their empathy to be honest i you know if if they want to hate me for what i'm doing when they have no understanding of what i'm doing that's fine you know if someone wants you, to you, you still feel that you still feel that there's there's animosity because they're like oh you're traveling I around looking at watches i personally don't feel it at all I don't. I'm. I'm not saying I'm exposing myself to it at all. But if I were looking for it, I could find it. I'm sure. I'm not looking for it. So this sort of hate doesn't find me, or doesn't. Even if it could, or, it, or if it did, it wouldn't strike me as something that would matter. It doesn't matter, you know. But that's, Look, I, I've come to the conclusion, and I don't want people to think it's sort of a nihilistic conclusion. But the conclusion is that appreciation of watches is is a passion pursuit and with that comes a lot of emotions and with a lot of emotions comes highs and lows and this notion of conflict amongst people that love the same thing I don't think is ever ever going to be taken out of this sort of watch lover community I think that people are going to equally agree that they love watches while at the exact same time like violently disagree on what watches they like for whatever reason the problem is that you know, and this is just a very, a very basic, uh, eternal truth in, in in psychology that hating on the same thing is the easiest way of building, you know, a micro audience or or building, you know, a, a follower base, which is what I see sometimes happens. Because if you if you say like, hey, you know, I like this, then you will probably be able to like, you know, one percent of the watches out there. But if you start hating on you know, a lot of them, people will, you know, just really easily be able to to say, hey, I feel safe about hating something because it's easy to defend. It's certainly easier to defend something that I hate than something that I love, at least in some people's minds, you know. And 
I personally wouldn't really spend too much of my time to elaborate on what I hate or what I dislike or something like that. But I've seen it happen and I know that it works in, you know, in the watch world or watch level world and also outside of it, that hating on the same thing is the easiest way of, of finding quasi friends or quasi followers who will just turn away sooner or later because, you know, it's a, it's a short term uh, entertainment to be disliking or hating on the same thing because it's extremely tiring. But for a short time, it works. Well, I think it's, you know, ultimately, and I, and I don't want to sound preachy about it, but I think in my experience, it's been a lot more meaningful to find people who I've shared loves with rather than shared hatreds with. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's led to a lot more satisfying relationships. I mean, you and I both like watches. There's things about watches and the industry and the pursuit of loving watches that we both dislike, and we sometimes agree and some disagree, but we both have a love of, of the pursuit of it, and... That's been a very enduring connection, and I think, and, th and that's one of the reasons that I feel always very compelled to be as fair as I can be and as attentive as I can be with the community because we do share this love, right? Like, I don't care if you're like a bully and a, and a total jerk. If you're spending your time on a blog to watch, it's not because you don't have at least some massive interest in watches. Yeah. And that's, it's hard for me to say, like, you and I both share this. We seem to have very little otherwise in common, but we both agree that watches are cool. Yeah. Joyeros uh, Relojeros, I think is what I'm looking at right now. Uh, what? The joy of watches. Hmm. I see you on Chrono24. I'm looking at um, a, an obscure show part with 8 hertz. I remember that obscure show part with 8 hertz. It's literally It was expensive and... Online, it's pretty expensive. It's not that expensive, actually. You know, this is. You know what? You know how you know this is like. This is like a prototype. It's like they meant for it not to be sexy. Like, no, 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 no. We have to save the sexy dial for later. Release yeah. this one first. See what happens. Because <laughs> a movement like this, it's too much risk to make it pretty, right? Because if this thing breaks, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a lot of like negative feedback. But if you make it, if you put it in an ugly watch first. They work the kinks few. out. Yeah. Yeah. And Shabar has a really good history of starting off cool movements. And I'm sorry, Shabar, I love you, but really, really ugly designs. I'm not even, I, you know what? I'm not even talking about this. But again, I, I said this taste is subjective, but look at, look at, look at early sh uh, Shabar LUC. I know. They were, they were horrendous. Horrendous. No, but the thing, and if you disagree with me, that's fine. If you like these styles, uh, more freaking power to you. But I think that the Shepard LUC dials today are phenomenally better than what they started out as. What, what are we looking at? Except for the fact that the, that the guy who designed them left it for Breitling. Oy, yes, yes. Quacka, quacka. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen with that one. I did like that diver, though, the LUC one. I'm trying to find an example yeah. here. Um, it's like $3,000. Three and a half thousand dollars. Yeah, but you don't for an LUC Chopard diver. Um, how did we go from talking about comments to Chopard? Does Chopard get like unfair comments? Okay, so what about you? You, you, you sometimes you 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 feel a lot about the audience, but at the same time, you know, now that we're talking about it, you seem you seem a little bit hesitant. Like, what what do you you know what are you afraid of happening? Or do you think that? You think that this is a, this type of feedback is something that not that we shouldn't be doing? You know, I think it's it, it, you can have a legitimate argument about whether us responding to the community is even a, a wise idea. You know, maybe they don't want us to do this. Maybe they want to talk amongst themselves and, and not have us do our own thing. I mean, it's mostly what we do, right? Like, I think in the, the day, like our content is judged by what we want to publish. We don't have meetings and ask ourselves, "Boy, what does what does the audience want to look at this week?" We make that decision and hope that enough people. Um, tend to feel that what we are serving them uh, caters, caters to at least some of their needs. The major gripe that I have with all this is that if I don't like a certain type of content, I end up taking all this time and going, I hate this, I hate you, and you. And I, just, just, get, just get the hell out of here, just go and do, uh, you know, and you know what I would genuinely, genuinely would appreciate and would respect and would like to see? People who are so freaking angry and have so much energy and have so much uh, <laughs> uh, claim to knowledge and understanding on how to do things better, to actually start doing things better. Be and do it your own way. Don't do it on our side. Don't do it in our comment section. Just start your own freaking blog and show how it's done. And if you are still around six months or, t or 12 months or three years later, of hard work later, 
then we can we can start getting on the same level and saying, okay, I, I understand, you showed it to me. I still disagree, but at least now I, now you have my respect. You know, someone coming here with no name and no face and nothing and getting angry and doing that for an extensive period of time, trying to say how it's actually supposed to be done, as opposed to actually doing it himself or herself, you know, it just, it just loses all its power and all its legitimacy as far as, uh, you know, criticism is concerned, in my book at least. Okay, so you're talking about, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to like put a name to this practice. This is basically what I call like the spectator telling the athlete how to play the game situation, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good take on it. Um, and, you know, so the idea is that somebody looking has commentary... Uh, and, 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 and even says, if I was in your shoes, I believe that I could be doing it better. And, I, you know, I, I don't know that we get a lot of this, but certainly that happens once in a while. People seem to think that they could, like, do our jobs better. And, and the thing is, I'm not threatened by this at all because I know exactly how difficult what we do is. It's, it, maybe it seems easy on the outside. I, I don't know. But I know it's not easy. And I also know that it's the type of thing that I'm very confident in, um, you know, the strategy of how we do things. I mean, we make changes to what we do all the time because we, we are an evolving platform. But what's interesting is this, is this notion where someone, they want us to do better, but rather than coming with a sort of um, cooperative, like let's fix this together approach, it's like an angry approach. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and like you, yeah, I, I, when they feel like they they could do it better, I'm like, you know what? Go ahead and try. I I hope you do. You know, maybe maybe you'll succeed uh, and find a process or a system or a tool that that is better than we've been able to come up with. I mean, we we make this stuff up as we go along, but it's this it's this interesting mentality of anger towards what you love. I, and, and again, maybe I'm overstating it. What you love, like they're not necessarily saying they they love a blog to watch or love watches, but they're they're definitely spending your time here, right? Um, and it's, it, it's, it's a very interesting mentality. You know, I asked, asked myself like, what's going on in their lives that they come here and they're, and they're, and, and this is supposed to be their recreational time, yet they can't help themselves, but like, you know, talk poorly about others. And, and I remember games I played, like, remember that, I don't know if you ever played it. They, I think they just came out with a movie of Rampage, where mm -hmm. you play like a big, uh, you know, like a big <clears throat> lizard or like a gorilla and you're punching up, uh, uh, you know, a, a bu a buildings in a video game. I think sometimes people, when they go online, um, you know, they imagine that they see it as like a game where they just get to be a big monster, like punching holes in a the city. There's some type of weird catharsis about it. I, I see it as stress relief, and apparently it's very effective stress relief. The problem is it's, it's definitely not victimless stress relief. It's not effective if you have to do it every single day, you know? It's... <laughs> Well, it's it, it's it's not fair to others, right? Because we're you know the people the, the the people online, the topics online, they're not buildings in a video game that you're punching. Yeah, you know. <sighs> the problem is we we cannot be you know we cannot take on the task or the duty of solving the problem that these people have in the same way how they don't take on you know solving our problems. So they have. Oh, did to you not want to be everyone's therapist, David? No, I definitely do not want to do that. I just, oh. you know, that's not in my job description of <laughs> being a watch blogger. <laughs> but yeah, I guess you know some sort of. Yeah, I wish I could help. I genuinely do. Word of luxury. Oh, it's not eight hertz. It's eight. It's eight. It's eight HF. God damn it! I can't even talk anymore. What are you looking at? I'm looking at this eight hertz thing. Is that a white dialed one? Ooh. From China. I, I think. Limit. It's fishy. It looks fishy to me. Why did they even put the date in there? It was like, there's so much room on other parts of the dial there to put the date. <laughs> Yet, look where they put it. I mean, just think about all the other places they could put the date. <laughs> now, let's go back here. I, I want your opinion. They're like, no, 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 no. We have to shove the date here in this way which if you're listening is actually we are looking at a round case show part with stubby short locks with a crown in the weirdest position at four o'clock for no obvious reason and there's a sub dial at seven o'clock with a narrow like three digit maybe four digit opening um no it's 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 a less than two digit opening yeah well it depends on how you're looking at it 
yeah, that's true. It's it's just a weird weird way of doing this. And then there's a lot of unused space everywhere else in the middle of the dial. I just remember when they came out with this watch, they weren't even sure if they were going to sell it. I mean, look at those lugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like they it's like they like they screwed on like little cement blocks. <laughs> we need to we need to attach these little cement blocks ever so gently. Yeah, I, I it's 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 insane enough for me to like it, but I I perfectly see what you mean. It's ridiculous. It, it's it's still totally ridiculous. <laughs> no, but I love but I love that somehow this made it to market. Like that's the one of the wonderful things about the watch industry is like you never have a car this ridiculous come out anymore. Maybe in the past. And the case spec says experimental movement <laughs> developed by Chopard Technologies as a hybrid silicium escapement beating eight times per second. TI 5 case, 100 pieces, limited edition, no punctuation, all caps. <laughs> yeah, see, like, they're basically saying we, we cladded this watch in something, like, not attractive so that you don't pay too much attention to it. So if the movement doesn't work very well, you're like, well, it is. I mean, look at the, look at the watch. Come on. You know, do you, it's, like, it's like if there's, like, a really, like, bad-looking race car. No one expects it to win, right? Yeah. Maybe they're just testing some technology. That's actually what but it the, is, yeah. But the funny thing is that Chopard couldn't help themselves. They still had to try and sell a bunch of them. A hundred of them. I've never even seen this dial option. Ever. That's so weird. The black one is pretty cool, though. But it's like $13,000. That's a lot. Thirteen to $40,000. Jesus. It's just like, this is like the, the Aztec of Chopard. Yes. Yeah, that's... Well, anyway. I you know, what, made, what made you want <laughs> one of these? I actually genuinely like the way the black tile ones look, and I don't even, you know, I'm not usually a fan of the black tile versions, but here it's pretty cool. I just like the, I like watches with short lugs and like a larger case because it's comfortable to wear. It's like a cool mix of the regular LUC with this uh, black rolled alligator strap that's super, you know, classy and elegant, and then you have this high tech case with all these weird. You know that white that white one? I think lacked the power reserve. Am I crazy? Yes. Yeah, no, it didn't have it. Wow, even more experimental and, and not useful. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, well. Wow, maybe that's some weird prototype. Anyway, I think we've been talking long enough for this for this podcast here. So let's wrap it up, is what I'm suggesting. Okay, final thoughts. Um, look, I think that no matter whatever happens when it comes to the community i always remind myself that it's the community which is why i started doing all this it's the community which allows any type of media publication to have any value and thus survive as a business so i think that the community is something that i always inherently appreciate more so than anything else and have had for the longest time a very laissez fair um type of, you know, philosophy, you know, I, I, like a laissez-faire parent. You just let it do its own thing and it'll, it'll sort of work itself out. I've unfortunately had to amend that philosophy. And the funny thing is that other members of the team have come in with with no laissez-faire mentality at all to begin with. And we've had some interesting, you know, intellectual dis- conversations about the best ways of managing the community. Um, now we actually have to engage in some management, which is, it's unfortunate like on the best days it's a hassle on the worst days it's yeah. just kind of annoying because it's like mm-hmm. really we have to deal with this but when we do that it is it is we're not doing it in our own interest we're doing it to protect the community we if we moderate something or if we have to engage in policing behavior it's because while we might be giving one person a bad day we're trying to give a, a larger volume of of people a, a better day by creating a safer environment or uh, a, a more a more appropriate environment um, and yeah it's sometimes we just got to make decisions and use our own discretion like what is and isn't appropriate and we can't catch everything but um, it's 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 in the it's in the interest of community health and it's always it always is it always is and yeah and, and I think what we're asking is not unfair it's not unbalanced it's not inconsistent you know Keep it, like, if you want to, we always say this, if you want to be critical, be critical, you're more than welcome, just don't be uh, about it. That's our only, like, fair request. I'm just going to say, keep it classy, everyone, just keep it classy. And if you want to have a good time, 
That's great. I love humor, but there's certain places where it is and isn't appropriate. And if you're the type of person that wants to like engage in crude humor and and your love of watches the exact same time, just don't do it in a public forum. That's all we ask. Yeah, take it somewhere else. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Okay, on that lovely note, everyone, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Spending Time with our little sort of behind the scenes on the nuances of of the community and some responses to some things we see, and apparently a little bit of conversation about Chopard. (laughs) Yay. Random. Totally random. (laughs) Non-sponsored mentioning of Chopard. (laughs) No, they paid us a ton of money to sit there and talk (laughs) about what I felt about their 8 hertz movement. Yeah. All right, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye. Talk later. Bye.